Today we start a journey together. We will set up my self-hosted services setup with nearly everything you need and can imagine. Document management systems, image management systems, media servers, reverse proxies, security, monitoring, everything. Normally you would have to pay for this on a course like Udemy, but we will do it together for free and learn how to do it. Starting with very basic things like an Ubuntu VM and stopping with specific stuff like backup scripts, dashboards and all the things you want and can imagine. We will do this together so you can write down in the comments what you want to see. So let's start. So we start here in Unraid where we are on the VM tab and can just simply say we also already see here YouTube DE as a virtual machine and can just say add VM and click on this button. We can use very many different distributions like many Windows ones, prepackaged ones or also Linux ones. We will use Ubuntu because it works very well, is very well known, has many users and works very well also with Docker, which we will need. So I click here on Ubuntu. I give it a name, I say YouTube, ah, that was wrong and can say initial memory is four gigabytes. Then also, of course, it's max memory. Then I have to select logical CPUs. I give him this four ones here. So, and now I can say, or I need to say the OS install ISO. This one you have to download yourself. That's not done by Unraid. If you want to do it with Unraid, you need to put it in some direct uh, directory like the ISOs one, like I did here. And you can download this from the Ubuntu page without any problems and just put it on your server because that's something that cannot be done by Unraid. Now we have to set up our primary disk or whatever you want to call it. And I would say pre 30 gigabytes are for our case right now enough. You can also choose more if you want to. And you don't have to change anything about this. Just give it some size and you are fine. We could also add some shares, like if you want from your root system of Unraid, where you have some folders, some data, you could mount them to the VM. But for now, we don't want to do this. Then we can just see, okay, the VM console keyboard is now English United States, which makes no sense for me because I'm in Germany and I have this German keyboard. And so I have to select the one. And that's basically all. We can just say create and start the VM after creation and press on this button and we see a new window appearing and can already see we see try or install Ubuntu server. Now I will just say okay because we don't need to change some UEFI firmware settings or whatever it's just a VM. You could do this if you are really well knowing what you're doing but for now we just want to install Ubuntu. Everything is loading first until we see this page. And then we are on the welcome page. So we can just say, okay, we select our language. English is okay. Then we see, okay, there's a new installer. It makes sense to use this one because if it's newer, some bugs are maybe fixed. We can just press update to the new installer and it gets downloaded. And we see now our keyboard configuration. For me, again, I have to choose German here because it makes no sense because I am having this Quartz keyboard and not QWERTY as layout. Do the appropriate one for yourself. Then press done. We can just choose here Ubuntu server. We don't want to use the minimized one. You could choose it, but only if you have really much storage problems, because otherwise you don't need to. And just click done. And we can see automatically the VM has a IP address now from my router. And that's fine for me. I can just say done. We don't want to have it proxied behind anything. And now the mirror address is checked if there's really internet connection. And we can see internet connection is fine. The tests were passed. And we can now also say, okay, if we want to use the whole disk or do we want another more complicated uh, structure or layout for us, for a little for VM, is it just like this and it's okay. You can also see how it is split and how much of the space we use for this one is really usable because Ubuntu also needs space and we can just say done. Then we get a warning that everything is formatted right now, but it's a VM, we have nothing anyways. So just press, press continue. So we have to give it a name now. The first is your name. For me, it's Sasha, And we have 
server name I can just say YouTube EN because that would be the name. Then I have to choose a username and also your secure password that you could also later replace with SSH. You can say done. I don't have Ubuntu Pro. If you have, there you go. But normally you don't need to. So just press continue. You can also say install OpenSSH server, which makes sense. And yeah, that you can really install and say done. Then you have also the possibility to choose already some things like Nextcloud or whatever, but we will do it the old fashioned way, install it ourselves, not really on bare metal and also not Docker. We will all do it ourselves and we can just press tab and say done. And now everything it will be installed. That needs a while, we will take a coffee. So it's spinning now and we can see install complete. We could say, okay, we want to view the full log or we could yeah, cancel it. The funny thing, the install is not really complete because yeah, it said complete, but it was still running. Now you can see reboot now and we can just press enter and the VM is rebooted. Then we have this error here, this, the CD-ROM remove needs to be removed. Don't know why it happens, just press enter and there you go. And now we can see the login page. We have to log in with our newly created username right now, which is this one and also a very secure password. And we are in. Very nice. You did the first step. But it looks a bit trashy in this kind of browser thing here right now of Unraid in a VNC view. It would be way nicer if we have it in the terminal of our device. So let's do this. We open up the terminal and can just say SSH and then our username, add and the name of our server. Normally your router should resolve it and can press enter and we see, okay, it's recognized and it's unknown because it's no new. We can just say for the fingerprint, yes. And we now need also the password and I type it in and you are in. Very easy, very nice. So what's the first thing to do after installing Ubuntu? Of course, installing updates. As you can see, there are 61 updates already available. We do sudo apt get update first. Now we need the password again for sudo. So the package list was read and we can also now change it to upgrade because we want to upgrade them. Then we have to press yes. And now everything is installed. That might take a while, but can also go very quickly. Then you will see this window, which services should be restarted. Just leave it as it is and say, okay, then everything will be restarted that is needed. And we have an updated system right now. One of the first things we want to handle is that annoying password entering when using sudo. Also, if you only need to do it once per session, but we don't want this. To solve this, we can say sudo nano and then etc sudo.d and our username and press enter. We can see, okay, we are in a nano editor. We can see below it's saying new file. And we have to create a file uh, line, just your username, then say all equal all and say no pass what, not completely, all. Then you can just press control X and say, yeah, we want to modify and save and just press enter and we have done it. If I now restart the terminal, then we will see that it's no problem at all. We say again, you know what's following. Okay. And now you don't need to type in the password. As you can see, it's just working. Another important thing might be setting the time zone to have correct logs because this time here is not my current time. So we can just say sudo dpk j whatever dpk reconfigure tc data or data and press enter. And then we can select where we are. For me, it's Europe, Berlin. And you can see our local time is now, yeah, 21. And the universal time is 20. We could do many things right now. We could, for example, install unintended un upgrades to automatically update our packages. But we can also use, which we will do later, something like Ansible for it, where we can use it for multiple machines as well. 
running scripts on multiple machines. Or we could also maximize our journal log. But for now it's just enough. These are very basic things that you should really do to have an easier life. So the next thing, what do we need? Docker, because we want to run everything in Docker. That's really important. For that, we go to the Docker page. You can see docs, Docker, engine, install Ubuntu. We use Ubuntu. There's an installation guide for everything. You can see the requirements we are using, I guess, 22.04. So it's no problem. If you have old versions, but we are starting from scratch, uh, you need to uninstall them. Then we can see the installation methods here. And we can see, okay, so set up Docker apt repository. And we can just copy this and say, okay, we paste it and press enter. That's very quickly done. Okay, we go back and say install Docker packages because right now only as it says the repository was added and now we really install the packages. We can also say a specific version, but it makes more sense to just use the latest one. And we also now include something like Docker Compose. You don't need to install it yourself anymore separately. So we just go back in our terminal and say, okay, yeah, we want to install this. This can also need a bit, but it's normally very, very quickly done. Then you might restart some services again and press okay, and you're good to go. So we can see the third step here to run Hello World. It's, it's basically the same as you have when running Java or any programming languages printing out. It has the same effect. We can do this, sudo docker run hello world and just press it and we can already see unable to find and there's the message hello from docker everything worked that's very cool and very easy we can also check now docker version for example that everything works and can then see okay there are informations about this but we can see permission denied while trying to connect to the docker daemon socket there's a little problem because our user does not belong to the docker group right now if we would use sudo docker version, it would work. It works fine. But same problem as before. We don't want this. We also want to be able to do it with our user without sudo. For that, we need to do two steps. We need to do first sudo group add docker if it's not already existing. Because now it is already existing with the current installation. But we would also need then to add this to this group, our user. That's sudo user mod, docker, and then the dollar sign and user. Dollar sign user is an environment variable that is already available while creating the Ubuntu user. So you don't need to type in your specific user. It is taken anyway. So we can just press it. And that's basically it. We now need to restart the terminal again. So here we are again. And if we now use docker version, it's, it's important that you really restart. Otherwise, it won't take an effect. It works like a charm and that's perfect. We can now start to do everything we want. Install Portainer, a reverse proxy or whatever you want to see. Let me also know in the comments if you have something specific. Also security things. Our journey starts now. See you in the next video.